diverse cuisine. encompassing a variety of food and cultures. Expect burst of freshness, full of diverse ingredients, spices, and flavors. Multi-watering dishes. Join us as we discover the food ways of this exotic region. The diverse cuisine of Southeast Asia. Ni hao, I'm Jenny, and for today I'm going to discuss to you the Singaporean cuisine. Singaporean cuisine. Singapore is seated at the cultural crossroads of an entire food crazy continent. By the numbers, it roughly 74% Chinese, 13% ethnic Malay, 9% Indian, and 3% Eurasian, as one of the wealthiest countries in Asia. Its drone workers in from everywhere and where large populations of immigrants workers go, good food is sure to follow. Singapore feels a similar to New York in this way. Not only it is a glass tower and metamorphosis of wealth, it also a hotbed for a half dozen different ethnic groups making and cooking their way through the world. Singaporeans are obsessed with food, perhaps because most of us are descendants of immigrants thrust into an artificial construct of a nation. Or maybe because we live in a country that is constantly renewed and rebuilding. One of the few tangible things that connects us to the past and our cultural identity is food. There are many phases of Singaporean cuisine, Malay, Chinese, Indian, Eurasian, a fusion of European and Asian dish and ingredients, Piranakan, combination of Chinese and Malay food traditions, and Kach All Western, which usually means old school Chinese style, British food, a, a local version of Western food adopted by chefs, from the southern Chinese province of Hainan, who work in British restaurants or households. Since Singapore is influenced by so many different regions, religions, and areas, there are also many events or anniversaries in Singapore. During the Lunar New Year, people eat Niango, which is originally from China. It is traditionally eaten around the Chinese New Year. Singapore's cuisine as, is as diverse as its culture. It is an extension of Malay, uh, Malay cuisine, but it by the Chinese and the Indians, not to mention the Arabs, British, and other immigrants who have uh, contributed to making Singapore one of the world's um, most important trading ports. History of Singapore in 10 dishes. First is Feng. Feng is a spicy tangent Portuguese Eurasian stew of diced pig oven. Damian de Silvia, the executive chef at Eurasian Peranakan restaurant, Porto. Lord says a good feng requires a good spice mix, fresh innards that are properly cleaned and patient. Cleaning the and preparing the opal, which includes letting it simmer for hours and sit overnight, can take days. Despite its long-standing roots in Singapore, Eurasian cuisine is notoriously hard to find at restaurants. But some chefs like Di Silvia are working to change that. Second is epok epok. Epok epok is simply the Malay version of the curry puff with a thinner crust and finger pitch edges. Their epok epok available in two flavors, sardine or curried potato, are probably among the cheapest in Singapore. Uh, priced at just $0.50 or $0.35 each and make a perfect tea time snack or a quick meal on the go. Bakkute. By the late 19th century, Singapore had emerged as an important regional entry pot given its strategic location and deep water harbor. Laborers from southern China toiled along the Singapore River un unloading goods from flat bottomed wooden boats. The origins of bak, bak kut te or pork rib soup are unclear. It may have been invented locally from these laborers as in a much needed morning energy boost, perhaps by tier two hawkers. Chinese immigrants from the uh, Chosan region in China's uh, Guangdong province, others claim that the recipe was brought over from Chinese Fujian province. The soup is typically eaten with a side of steamed rice, chopped red chili in dark soy sauce to lessen or to lesser a extent or, or a strong olong tea to cut through the green. Laksa. By the 20th century, the Singapore flying the free port flag high trade and attracted uh, shiploads of immigrants. Singapore's, Singapore's population jumped from about 1,000 in 1819 to over 200,000 at the turn of the century during the 1901 census.
Chinese immigrants made up the lion's share of the population, followed by Malays, Indians, Europeans, and Eurasians of mixed Asian and European descent. Laksa, a dish of a thick rice, vermil or vermicelli with prawns, fish cake, cow pork, and sihong in a rich spicy coconut based broth, garnished with roughly chopped don. Don, don kesong is said to have originated from the intermarriages between local Malay women and the Chinese traders. Kaya toast. Chinese immigrants from Hainan province are said to have created kaya toast. Toast served with a custardy coconut jam and butter. In the 1930s, according to legend, Hainan cooks abroad British ships were attempting to replicate fruit jam but made do a limited ingredients including coconut, egg, and pandan leaves. Kue Ubi Q. British forces in Singapore surrendered to the Japanese in February 1942 in what Sir Wilston Church described as the worst disaster in the largest capitulation in British history. It was renamed by Sho Nanto, meaning Light of the South Island. The Japanese occupation of Singapore lasted from 1942 to 1945. It was marked by a hardship and star city, or scarcity. Kue Wiki, or Steamed Tapioca Cake, is a bite-sized dessert consisting of steamed tapioca, a starch made from cassava root, which is then coated with grated coconut. It's widely believed to have a its consist um, um origins in the occupation when many locals were forced to survive on cassava, which grows easily and can be harvested every three months. Next is the fish head curry. Fish head curry was invented in Singapore in 1949 when Marian Jacob Gomez and in Indian restaurateur from Kerala wanted to create a South Indian style dish to cater to Chinese customers who considered fish head a delicacy. Sambal Stingray Singapore's relationship with Malaysia is complicated to say the least. As with many local dishes in Malaysia and Singapore, there is ongoing debate regarding the origin of Sambal Stingray. Depending on who you ask, it could be a Mal Malaysian dish that gained popul popularity in Singapore or a Singaporean dish Malay creation that is commonly sold by Chinese hawkers, typically slaughtered with spicy, aromatic sambal chili paste wrapped in banana leaf and grilled with. And grilled, this dish is a hawker center mainstay, a chong or chong barbecue at Feng Shan Market and Food Center or Center does a pretty decent version. Um, best enjoyed with a squeeze of calamansi or lime before serving. A spicy and pungent fermented shrimp sauce dip is optional. Kakang pute, kakang pute, Malay for white beans, is a selection of nuts, crackers, and greens. Uh, the mix was traditionally packed in cones made from newspaper and sold by pushcarts or pushcart vendors outside cinemas. These pushcarts usually contained a range of snacks, uh, including the roasted cashew or steamed chickpeas, sugar coated peanuts, and Savory Indian snack. Malashango, the influence of new immigrants has contributed to the continued evolution of the Singaporean foodscape. Malashango, a fiery mouth numbling stir fry of vegetables from southwestern China, has become popular in Singapore in recent years. A common greeting for the Singaporean Chinese is the question, Have you eaten? As in the various Chinese dialects, it is, the, is, it is one way to express a greeting to another person. It is also possible to assume that this is how Singaporeans think about the meal and food. Hawker Center Hawker centers are open-air complexes that house many stalls selling a wide variety of affordable priced food. They are mostly conveniently located at the heart of housing estates, usually with adjuring wet, wet markets. Hawker centers are a unique aspect of Singapore culture and lifestyle. Chinatown Market was the, was built in 1981 to house the last of Chinatown's street hawkers. With around 700 stalls, it's Singapore's largest hawker center and market today. Singapore seasoning, also known as Singapore Spice or Singapore Blend, origin. Um, ingredients or spices are black pepper, turmeric, coriander powder, fenugreek powder, lemon peel powder, garlic powder, onion powder, cumin ground, white pepper ground, allspice ground, citric acid, Acid, nutmeg ground, cinnamon, fennel powder, ginger ground, and red pepper. Its taste and aroma is lemony, peppery, powerful, and full of flavor. These spices uses for fish, pork, chicken, steak, and vegetables. Good
day, ma'am. I am Adrian J. De Guzman and I'm a reporter in Philippine Cuisine. Philippine Cuisine. Philippine Cuisine is a product of the is a product of the influences of many cultures like Malay, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, etc. History and influences. Austronations. Boiling, steaming and roasting. Arabao, cow, chicken and pig and different kinds of seafood in Chinese rice cultivation and other practices related to farming were introduced introduced notable ingredients from China dark soy sauce tofu mung bean sprouts fermented fish sauce oyster sauce salted and fermented black beans light soy sauce ocean sauce sesame oil Five spice powder, Sichuan pepper, water, chestnuts, white sesame seeds, fresh root ginger, and dried Chinese mushrooms. Noodles like bean, thread noodles, rice noodles, egg noodles, in the pre preparation of fancy flavor with seafood or meat and vegetables. History and influences in Philippines. Philippine cuisine normally comes in a, in a pairing combination. Filipinos traditionally eat three main meals a day. Vinegar is a common ingredient. Spoon and pork are the utensils used on the dining table. The tra traditional way of eating is by the use of hands, especially for dry dishes. Regional cuisine and specialties. Vegan longanisa. Vegan longanisa, small links of pork, sausages, and garlic flavor. Next is batak empanadas. Batak empanadas. Orange because of achuete use. Rice flour is used in preparing the crust and stuff with egg, beans, beans browns, and garlic longanisas. The next is bagnet. Bagnet, deep fried pork belly, similar with lechong kawali serve. Bagoong, munamon, fermented, anchovy clip. Next is pinakbet. Pinakbet. A popular mixed vegetable dish flavored with bagoong. Next is okoy. Okoy or shrimp fritters. Next is faki faki. Traditional Ilocano vegetable dish made of grilled eggplant, tomatoes, and eggs. Next is Dudol, the local dessert, dessert made of rice, made of rice flour, coconut milk, sugar and juice, and anise. The next is dinardaran or dinguan, wherein crunchy bagnet is used in a thick and pork blood stew. Next is roasted ding ding or fried fish in a brow. Flavored as a food dish, bagoong made of vegetable stuff. Vegetable stuff. And last is dinakdakan. Dinakdakan is an Ilocano dish made of grilled or boiled pork parts. Consumed as appetizer. And the next is Apampangan Cuisine. Apampangan Cuisine and Specialties. Sisig, Morcon, Morcon Minudo, Aldereta, Estupado, Embudito, Embutido, Asado, Lengua, Lechon, Chicharon, Apretada, Bringhi or Paella, Paella, Tabang Talangka or Crab Meat, Latusino or Pindang Tibok Tibok or Amaha Blanca. In Bulacan, Bulacan is Kutsinta, Sapin Sapin, Suman, Asabake, Halay ube and pastillas de leche, the king of sweets. Next is in antipolo, in antipolo, suman and cashew nuts. Next in batangas, sardines, the bagoong is the or fermented fish, bulalo and kaping barako. Next in Quezon province, pancit hab hab. Next is bakolod. Chicken in a salad or squared roasted chicken. Next is Ilo Ilo Province. 
lapas batchoy, pansit molo, tinuguan, uto, biskotyo, and piyaya. And in Mindanao, turmeric, coriander, lemongrass, cumin, and chilies are unique from other regions in the country. And next is Filipino basic ingredients, anato seeds or aswete, Asian eggplants or talong, bagoong, bamboo shoots, banana heart or puso ng saging, bean sprouts or toge, bitter melon or ampalaya, kasaba or amoting kahoy, cold fat, chayote or sayote, chilies or sili, coconut, fish sauce or patis. And the food specialties in Philippines is lechon, apritada, adobo, sinigang, lumpia, kare-kare. And the last is Filipino traditional tools and equipment. The first is kawale or a pan. The next is gas stove or a lamp. And the next is palayok or pot. And the last is Dikdiga or Durog Ito po yung pang Durog ng mga halimbawa ko paminta Ganun po Hi And I'm going to discuss to you about the Vietnam or the Vietnamese cuisine And just a short um, introduction for the Vietnam um, Vietnam have a long coastline which is rich in seafoods Also it have a fertile land Oh, yeah. And another thing is there is three categories for the Vietnamese cuisine. It is the middle part, it's the um, northern part, which is have a cold weather, and there is the central part, which is sophisticated on their cuisines, and lastly is the south. The south is the best part of Vietnam, because uh, dito centro to ng kalakalan, also nandito lahat ng mga produkto, kasi mayang sa sa panahon also for the colonization. Central Vietnam's cuisine. Among those three, the north, south, and the central, the central part have the most strongest flavor on their food. Why? Because they have the long coastline of the sea, which is their primary product is salt, also fish sauce. Doon po lang mapapaisip na kayo na talagang matatapang ang templahan nila doon ang pagkain. And another thing is, I don't have enough knowledge or ideas about the cuisine of like the north and the south, which is talagang marami sa mga pagkain na may pepesan. Um, ang isa lang sa example this, nito ay yung Huey breakfast noodle soup. Minsan, nagiging beef din to, but ito yung pinaka-common. The cuisine in the northern part of Vietnam, uh, northern Vietnam is not like the south and the central. North is not as good in what is Kalakalan. Kasi sa doon ng Kalakalan is yung South. So, hindi masyado mayaman sa resources ang North. But, kahit yun, nandaroon pa din silang pinagmamahing pagkain. Like, the Pa. <coughs> pa is the number one food in the Northern part. Also in the South, but there is a difference between the two parts. Between the two, the South and the North. The northern pa have a thicker, thicker noodles. Also, it is saltier, not like the south. It have a thinner um, noodles. Also, it is sweet. And northern Vietnam is recognized more by the Chinese. They are most, I would say, also most stir fry. Also, mm, na, na nagamit din nila yung about sa yin and yang, which is symbol of balance. The southern Vietnam. In southern meal, um, they compose it with greens. What I mean in greens is vegetable and fruits. And it was only provided by Macron Delta. And Macron Delta is a famous place na kung saan ang sentro ng Kalakalan. Kaya napakasarap na ng south kaysa sa north at saka central part. Kasi yung Macron Delta is not only just a center of the Kalakalan, but it is also the center of Taniman. Taniman ang mga gulay at uh, frutas. Um, one of the famous food in south southern part of Vietnam is the banh mang. 
uh, it is a very strong flavor food also napakayaman din yung pagkainan yan sa seafood also in the vegetable kaya yun talaga yung pinakang gusto ko ng Balagano if ever na mabigyan ako ng chance kung ito ang Vietnam yun ang pinakaw na kong hanapin mo WALA KAMI PAKIALAM! For the additional information um, Vietnamese had a very unique utensils that they use in that in that country which is Dao Bao Dao Bao is a Vietnamese paler it can also be a knife but ang pinaka unique dito is yung pumis niya it's just like a small shoulder nakita ko siya yun, parang siyang ano, maliit na panghalaman niya yun for a short information about the historical influence of Vietnam number one is Chinese next is France, Laos Thailand, um, India, Korea, and Japan. But among all those countries, ang pinaka talagang malaking influence sa Vietnam is the Chinese. Chinese or China. Which being influenced to them is the five, five elements, also the yin and yang, also the use of cooking chopstick. About the five elements, I will discuss it later further more. For the Vietnamese feast, it is the most common, the basic feast, which is the Ko Mot Tong consists of 10 dishes and 5 of those dishes is put in the bowl like the bamboo stew uh, also the soup and the rest of the pie is put in the plate like the stir fries, stir fries and other ones next is for the dish present during the fish that um, the most common dish uh, we are having is your uh, meatballs, spring onions yeah. Next is the feast for the offering of ancestor. Ito yung isa yung sagrado feast para sa kanila. Kasi dito, hindi ka tulad ng mga ibang dishes. Ang niyahain dito is yung paborito o yung mga ninanais na pagkain ng taong namatay kung siya ay nabubuhay pa. And lastly is the giving of the gifts before you leave the feast. The Vietnamese dishes is appealed to the gastronomy of the five senses. First is the arrangement of the food for the fish ball. Next is the crispiness of the ingredients for the sound. And the five spices for the smell, or the taste rather, and for the aromatic herbs for the smell. And the contrast, texture, and the consistency for the touch. And that is all for the Vietnamese cuisine. Okay. <laughs> Indonesia. Indonesian cuisine represents the food, recipes, and cultural heritage of the world's largest archipelago. And did you know that Indonesia is also known as the Spice Islands and has been the source of many spices traded all over the world since the early times? And in all, Indonesian cuisine has about 5,350 traditional recipes and they vary from region to region and they exhibit uh, many foreign influences. Like for example, in Sumatra, you'll find curried meat and uh, vegetable dishes by Indian and Middle Eastern influences. And in fact, uh, by 1st and 8th century, Hindus and Buddhists left a legacy to Indonesia which is vegetarianism. And during the 15th century, Arab traders introduced Islam to Indonesia. That's why most of them became Muslim and the result is consumption of pork and alcohol is restricted. As you can see in the picture, there are peanuts, chilies, and tomatoes. Those were introduced by Spanish and Portuguese traders. The Dutch also influences Indonesians by bringing cabbage, carrots, string beans, potatoes, and cauliflowers. Indonesian food carries a lot of influence in its own right, but Chinese immigrants contributed a great deal in making Indonesian cuisine what it is today. In fact, the Chinese market introduces different types of soybean to Indonesia. The first one is the tahu, or what we call tofu or tokwa, and the next one is the tauge or soybean sprouts. In Filipino, it is what we call the tauge. And lastly, the ketchup or soy sauce or what we know the toyo. And not only soybean were introduced by Chinese, but also variety of noodles and also the shomai and the famous bakso or fish dumplings in soup or bakso meatballs like what you see in the picture as they travel to Indonesia to train. And the second picture beside the bakso is what they called kebabs or skewered meat cubes and it was introduced by Arabs. So because of its vast regional diversity, it's difficult to characterize um, Indonesian cuisine though many of its Southeast Asian neighbors, Indonesian food 
can be best described as rich, complex, and intensely flavorful. Now let's move on to the regional specialties. Just like many things in Indonesia, the food is as diverse as it gets. Every ethnicity in the country holds unique recipes specific to their culture. The Minangkabau ethnic group inhabited West Sumatra, which is famous for its hot spicy dishes, and that is to keep people warm because they live in cold highlands. The Minang or Padang food is the cuisine of Minangkabau people, and its cuisine consists of three main elements. The first one is the gulai or curry, the second one is the lado or chili pepper, and bare or rice. So, their, one of their specialty is called renta, one of their traditional food of Minangkabau people and it is commonly made with a special sauce containing high amount of coconut milk. Japanese cuisine on the other hand is quite indigenous and influenced by the abundance of sugar production during the colonial times. Chicken, goat, meat, beef, lamb, and muton are popular meats in Japanese cuisine and its traditional recipes usually feature ingredients that are native to that area and one of the popular dish of Japanese is the tumpeng. It is a cone shaped rice surrounded with chicken, omelette, eggs, sambal goreng ati, or the beef liver in sambal. Up next is the Balinese cuisine. It is recognizably different from the cuisines of Java, Padang, and other regions. Hence, Balinese cuisine are not Muslim. They are Hindu Bali, so they eat pork and they consume alcoholic beverages like tuak, palm wine, and uh, bran bali or rice wine. And they also use a variety of spices blended with uh, fresh vegetables, meat, and fish. And the, uh, one of their specialty is called sadalilit or Balinese sade made from spiced mince pressed onto skewers which are often lemongrass steak. Next is the Peranakan or Nyonya Cuisine. It is the result of blending Chinese ingredients with various distinct spices and cooking techniques used by the Malay Indonesian community. This gives rise to the interpretations of Malay Indonesian food that is similarly tangy, aromatic, spicy, and herbal. So its traditional food is ayam or babi bangte. It is a stew chicken or pork cooked with tauchu or salted fermented beans and gula melaka. It is usually um, salt dish sweet and can be substituted as a soup dish. Now there are a lot of uh, Indonesian basic ingredients and we've listed some of it. The first one is the bakpuang or yam bean or what we call the singkamas. So it is similar to turnip in shape and it is used in spring rolls, stir fries, and salad. The second one is the bean sprouts or toge. So most of these sprouted beans come from mung beans, though soya beans are also available. And the example dish is choi sung bean sprouts is their fry. Next one is the coriander or kincha in Filipino. In Indonesia, seeds are more often used than leaves. And then the next one is the chilies. It is used in the preparation of sambal and other recipes. And the next one is the coconut milk and cream. So this is basically shredded coconut flesh that is pureed with water and strained to create a thick creamy white liquid. Now let me show you some of the most commonly used tools in Indonesian cuisine. The first one is the solid wooden chopping block or heavy wooden cutting board. So this is made of wood of course on which material for cutting or chopping is placed like um, meat, fish, or vegetables. And then the next one is the heavy clover. Of course it is used in chopping up meats, um, seafood, or bruising stalks of lemongrass or smashed cardamom pods to release their fragrance. And then the next one is the food processor, blender, or electric spice grinder. Of course, it is used to grind or crush seasoning. And then the next one is the wok. It is ideal for deep frying. Of course, as you can see in its features, it requires less oil than a conventional deep fryer. Moreover, it allows just the right amount of evaporation for those dishes which begin with a large amount of liquid and finish with a thick sauce. And then the next one is the frying shovel or spatula. It is an essential partner of a wok. And then the last one that I'm presenting to you is the woven bamboo steamer. So it is a bamboo steamer and it is preferred to a metal steamer because it's, it absorbs more moisture rather than letting it fall back into the food. And the chief cooking method are pan frying, deep frying, simmering in broth, steaming, and grilling. And for many dishes, onions, garlic, spices, and chilies are often first sauteed in a vegetable oil then depending on the dish the other ingredients may be added to the pan or the cooked seasonings may be added to a cooking liquid thai cuisine Sorry, girl. i am reporting today the thai cuisine thai cuisine is spicy or hot the most prevalent 
in Thai cooking comes from the chili. Thais tend to cook by feel, taking into account the taste and preferences of their family, appreciating historical influences. Probably, Thailand is one of the most diverse, diverse and complex countries in Asia. Hindi na nakahagulat na maagad na nila yung mga kapitbahay nila na countries na mga cuisine. The Chinese introduce many dishes to Thailand like rice porridge, fried rice noodles, stewed pork with rice. The Chinese also introduce the wok for cooking. The technique of deep frying and stir frying dishes and noodles, oyster sauce, and soy products. So yung Chinese daw yung nagpakilala sa kanila ng stir fry, deep fry, ganun. Tsaka yung mga flavors, tsaka yung wok, yung parang lutuan sa kanila na parang kawali. Yung naatit naman nila na culture sa Indian and Persian cuisine is kain kahi, yellow curry, and kain at saman curry. Regional cuisine. There are four regional cuisine of the country, include Northern, Northeastern, or Eastern, Central, and Southern. Each cuisine shares similar food or foods derived from those neighboring countries and regions. Like, one is Bucha to the Northwest, Chinese province of Yunnan and Laos to the North, Vietnam and Cambodia to the East, Malaysia to the South of Thailand. This is the characteristics of Thai cuisine. Thai cuisine is the spiciest in Southeast Asia. And the harmony of three to five fundamental flavors in each dish are for the overall meal is sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and spicy is apparent. And Nam Plal Nam Tukri, consisting of fish sauce, lime juice, chopped chilies, and curry, dried chili plates, sweet chili sauce, sliced chili peppers, rice wine, vinegar, sriracha sauce, or a spicy chili sauce or paste called Nam Plal. And also white black noodles, the thin black noodles, and the round thin noodles and kapir lime. Kapir lime dips are usually combined with curry, galanggal, lemongrass, thai lemon, and beef. And now let's proceed to Thai cooking tools, utensils, and equipment. This one is a sticky rice steamer basket and pot with sticky rice serving basket. Sticky rice steamer set basket and pot. This sticky rice steamer set is essential cooking equipment for preparing sticky rice at home. And sticky rice serving baskets usually serve steamed rice in this covered small round baskets placing them around the dining table. The next one is Brook Thai Mortar and Pasal Plate. This type of clay mortar and pasal set is a part of every traditional kitchen in the northeast of Thailand and in Laos. In Laos, the mortar is called Glob or Pasal Song. This clay set is must have tool for making some top spicy papaya salad. The next one is Colorful Sticky Rice Serving Baskets, set up to handmade and imported from Thailand. This colorful clay filler of bamboo sticky rice serving baskets are used to keep rice warm over the course of meat. So, nakapanatili niya na mahinit pa rin yung kanin. And next one is brass wok. This beautiful solid brass wok is mainly used for cooking Thai desserts but can only be used for preparing and serving soups and curries. This one is Thai charcoal outdoor stove. This hot fashion Thai charcoal stove is still widely in use in Thailand, both at home and in the market. For the modern home, it is not only for the great barbecue but also perfect for wok cooking outdoors. The next one is Kanam Rock Pan. Great delicious Thai coconut pancakes or Canon Rock at home. This marketplace favorite is a bite-sized, sweet and savory hot cake prepared with coconut milk and ground rice. The next one is coconut reader, used to extract meat from the shell of the coconut. The coconut is cracked open and blend out it loosen the meat from the shell so it can be used to make fresh coconut meat. Set in a higher than meal. The last one is Thai ceramic tea kettle set. Thai ceramic tea kettle set is suitable for serving tea. Ceramic has ability for well keeping the tea hot. Thai decorated the kettle comes together with four little serving jars in a tray. And now let's proceed to Thai basic ingredients. Thai basic ingredients are aubergines, bamboo shoots, basil, bean curd, bean sprout, bean sams, chili, coconut milk, coriander, curry paste, fish sauce, or nabla, kaffir lime, galangal, roasted ground rice, shallots, soy sauce, tamarind, and vinegar. And now let's proceed to Thai basic cooking methods. First one is stir frying pan. Stir frying is a quick and fast free method of cooking if you do not have a wok. A large frying pan will suffice. Ensure that the wok is hot before adding in the cooking oil. Allow the cooking oil to heat up before adding in your ingredients. Stir them around quickly with a spatula to heat them through. Once the food is cooked, dish out and serve hot. Next one is stewing. Stewing helps to retain all the nutritional goodness and sweetness of the ingredients in the stewing kidney. Transfer cuts of meats can also be used. The cooking process will render them yet tender. To stir food, the ingredients are usually cut into pieces of similar size and placed into enough liquid to cover them completely. Next one is steaming. In steaming, the ingredients are cooked by the before that rises from the boiling liquid below. As the ingredients do not come into direct contact with the liquid, most of the nutrients are retained, making this a healthy means of cooking. Next is deep frying. 
this is a method where food is cooked in a large amount of cooking oil. Deep enough to cover it completely, the frying can be done in a walk in or a deep pan. Willing yang. Willing is done by setting food above or below a heat source to cook it. This can be done over hot coals, charcoal, under the electric grill in the oven, or even on the top of stove using heavy base plant. And that's all for Thai cuisine. Thank you for listening. For today, I'm going to discuss to you the Malaysian cuisine. The cuisine of Malaysia. Malaysian cuisine is a diverse and complex mix of influences from all over Asia. Dishes include satay, which is steward grilled meat and sauce, as well as beef, roasted beef, and sambal. A spicy chili-based condiment. Street food ranges from fresh coconut to laksa, and many more delicious spicy dishes. What makes Malaysian cuisine unique? As a result, Malaysian food is very mixed, with influences from many different cultures from around the world. Malaysian flavors are a unique combination of sweet, sour, rich, and spicy, combined in a way unlike a other country's cuisine. We have three staple foods in Malaysia. First is rice or nasi, is the most important staple food in Malaysia. Second is noodles. Noodles are another popular staple, particularly in Malaysian Chinese cuisine. Third is bread. A typical way of serving white bread in Malaysia is toasting it and spreading it with kaya. Kaya is a sweet spread made from a base of coconut milk, egg, and sugar. What is traditional Malaysian food? Well, it is common to see traditional Malay dishes, such as pulut kuning, which is yellow glutinous rice with beef rendang, nasi briyani, nasi minyak, lamb soup, kurma daging, and ayam masak merah. Serve along with local foods and assorted with Malay kuih during these occasions. How many meals do Malaysian eat? They say that they're very proud of the fact that Malaysians can eat up to six meals a day, says Ong. A typical day can start with breakfast, then 11th, followed by lunch, and a light of bowl of noodles fill any gaps between 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., then a dinner is their main meal of the day, and the hawkers serve that to schedule. Top 10 dishes in Malaysia First is nasi lemak, possibly the national dish of Malaysia and beloved by all local. It's something you most definitely must eat when you're in Malaysia. There are a few varieties of nasi lemak and many variations, but the basis of this dish is rice cooked in coconut milk topped with spicy sambal chili sauce. Ikan bakar. Ikan means fish and bakar means grilled in Bahasa Malaysia. So ikan bakar is grilled fish, but it's amazing marinated grilled fish. Ikan bakar is spiced up in a blend of chili paste then grilled over charcoal on top of a banana leaf over the fire. The moist fish is eaten with a plate of hot rice, sometimes some side dishes and curries, and dipped into head chop meat, ke, ke cup manis for extra flavor. Banana leaf. As mentioned before, Indian plays a major part in the diverse spectrum of the food in Malaysia. And banana leaf, as it's commonly known, it is a local favorite. The food served at Malaysia Banana Leaf Restaurant is often of South Indian origin. You, you sit down at a table with a banana leaf as your plate, and it does not take long before the waiter dishes you a giant scoop of rice and a round of incredibly tasty vegetarian curries. Banana leaf is often served vegetarian, but you can also normally order side of meat to supplement the vegetable. The vegetable curries if you live. No utensils are needed to eat in a banana leaf. You just go with your fingers and liver. Nasi kanda, another Indian influenced branch of Malaysia's food, originally perfect in Penang, is known as nasi kanda. Nasi, as you may already know, is rice, and a kanda is a stick of pole used as curry things with. Formerly in the Malaysian villages, the rice and curry was sold from mobile vendors who carried large pots of wood using a kandar. Nowadays, nasi kandar basically refers to rice and Indian style curry. You may get a plate of rice and dish yourself with a muted curry, fried chicken, and some rotis on the side. Roti kanai. Roti can mean different types of fried bread depending on where you are. In Malaysia, a roti kanai is a thin piece of dough fried in a lot of oil and then served with a curry dipping sauce. 
The dough is first stretched out, then slapped across a countertop, then fold into a small square and fried it in oil. It gives it lots of flaky, crispy layers, and you break off bits of the roti and dip it into the delicious curry gravy. Curry laksa and asam laksa. A great bowl of laksa will leave you stunned upon first bite. At least that's what happened to them when they slurp up their favorite or their first very bite of curry laksa in Kota Kinalabu, Sabah. There are two different kinds of laksa in Malaysia food. The curry laksa and the asam laksa. Asam laksa is noodles in murky brown fish soup. While curry laksa is noodles swimming in a thick and extremely flavorful coconut milk curry. There are many variations depending on what part of Malaysia you're in. But for the but for the most part of get a bowl of noodles topped with spice filled soup, seafood and or chicken and garnished with a lots of herbs and Vietnamese coriander. Char Kuai Tau. Malaysians absolutely love to eat. That's one of the reasons why we love Malaysia so much. And if you really want to relate and make a Malaysian feel at home, start a conversation about Char Kuai Tau. The dish includes white rice noodles which are stir fried on high heat with shrimp, bean sprouts, chives, and often an egg. A char kuai tu, tu is so good you'll immediately order another plate after finishing your first. Hokkien mei. Another giant scene in the Chinese style fried noodles is Hokkien mei, a recipe derived from the Fujian province of China, like nearly all food in, Mar in Malaysia. There are quite a few variations such as Hokkien hei mei, which is prawn noodles, and Hokkien char mei, which is dark colored fried noodles. The noodles are normally fried in lard on an extremely high heat and flavored with dark soy sauce. It's absolutely amazing. Nasi Kampur. Well, Nasi Kandar is the Indian version, and Economy Rice is the Chinese ver version, rice topped with a selection of different dishes. Nasi Kampur is the Malay version. You'll find stalls and restaurants set up all over the country where you are given a plate of rice, and it's your task to make sense of the assortment of dishes and scoop up whatever looks the best. Bakkutte, translating directly to meat bone tea. This Southeast Asian Chinese dish includes lot of pork, slow cook until extremely tender in a broth filled with herbs and soothing spices. Bakkutte is especially popular in a, as a breakfast dish in Malaysia. A Guide to Malaysian Spices with Norman Musa. Cloves in Malaysia is Genki. Mixed spices is Albla Kampur. Nut nutmeg is BG Bua Pala. Cinnamon is Kulit Kayu Manis. Star anise is Bunga Lawang. Ground five spices which is fennel, cinnamon, star anise, cloves and peppercorns, and green karmadom is Bua Pe Lala. That's I. My name is Jumel Digabog. And I am here to report Cambodian cuisine. Cambodian cuisine is an umbrella term for the cuisine of all ethnic groups in Cambodia, where is Khmer cuisine refers specifically to the cuisine of the Khmer people over the course of its more than 10 years long history. Khmer cuisine has incorporated elements of Indian, Chinese, and more recently French cuisine. And due to some of these shared influences and mutual interaction, it has made similar similarities with the neighboring Thai, Vietnamese, and Laos cuisine. Khmer cuisine can be classified into peasant, elite, and royal cuisine. Although the differences between the royal and the popular cuisine is not pronounced as in the case of Thailand and Laos, they are, the royal and elite dishes use more varied and higher quality ingredients and contain more meat while the peasant food is made from simpler and more accessible ingredients. Characteristic of Cambodian cuisine Normally consists of a soup, a salad, a main fish dish, vegetables, and rice. Cambodian dessert normally based on fresh fruits and sticky rice. Cambodia has the regular aromic rice, but also the delicious glutinous style, commonly known as sticky rice. Cambodia eat more bread than almost at every other country in Asia because of French colonial influence. One of the popular dishes in Cambodia is kaupun. The process of making kaupun could have been brought by the Lao ancestors as they migrated in the greater Mekong subregion from southern China. It is also like that the kaupun noodles that introduced to Laos by Chinese merchants because Luang, Prabang, and Viet, Viet Tian 
was part of ancient trade route with China. Samlar Machu Samlar Machu is a common term for a category of sour soups. The sour flavor of soup comes from the use of tamarind. However, variation also include over tangy fruits and vegetables such as tomatoes, pineapples, opomea, aquatica, celery, as well as tal taliacola, rindra, leaves. That are many types of camar soups such as similar macho yun, similar macho seri, similar macho kroyu. Basic Cambodian ingredients Banana flowers, banana leaves, basil, chili peppers, coriander, daikon radish, dried Cambodian fish. Ay kung del ban to sana! Sabay day, I'm Eliza. For today, I'm going to discuss to you about Laotian cuisine. Laotian cuisine, or the Lao cuisine, is the national cuisine of Laos. Food is the most important activity throughout the day. In the local language, it is quite common for people to greet each other by immediately asking, Have you eaten food? Food is often the topic of many conversation. As a result, Lao often identify themselves as Lak Kao Niao, which can be translated as children or descendants of sticker rice. Seems like if they don't prefer to eat sticker rice, they would not be called Lao. Characteristic of Lao cuisine. Lao cuisine tend to have herbs and veggies that are simmered or have overnight marinated required. Meals typically consist of a sabaw, great dish, sauce, or green stone of this dish. Savory of dishes are never sweet. Sweet and sour is generally considered bizarre and foreign in Laos. They have their saying that sweet makes you dizzy, bitter makes you healthy. Lao people disdain sweet foods, preferring bitter and herbal flavor in their meals. The freshness of ingredients is very important to Lao people, who likes to prepare everything from scratch rather than to use pre-prepared ingredients as they believe this makes their food more delicious. Lao's traditional tools and equipment. Lao mortar, usually used for grinders, food processor, Lao cooker used this tool to smash the herbs and ingredients. Sticker rice steamer, what is the bamboo basket commonly used in Laos? The third one is typical Laos or brazier is called Taolo and is fueled by charcoal. Also, they have wok or mao pang in Lao. It is used for frying and stir frying. Common ingredients that are used in Laotian cuisine are fresh peaches, lemongrass, paddle, or fermented fish sauce, local chilies, and chili beans. Grilling, boiling, mixing, and stowing are all traditional cooking method in Lao cuisine. Okay. Now let's move on to the Myanmar or Burmese cuisine. So the food in Myanmar has its own special identity. Although it draws at its neighbors, it is neither as hot as Thai, as spicy as Indian, nor does it resemble to Chinese cooking much except in the stir-fry vegetables. Nowadays, various kinds of Myanmar food and snacks are available in the street bowls, uh, market stalls, and restaurants. And for your information, like in the Philippines, rice is also a staple, staple food except those uh, in highland areas where rice is difficult to grow. And in those areas, rice, malay, sorghum, and corn are the staples. So in Myanmar, rice is accompanied by a raw salad of leaves, fruits, or vegetables, a soup, and curries of fish, meat, prawns, or eggs. And in addition to turmeric and chili, curries are seasoned with fermented fish or shrimp paste and a variety of cultivated vegetables and wild greens are eaten as well as bamboo shoots. Now the countries that border Myanmar, especially the India, China, and Thailand have influenced Burmese cuisine. Indian influences are found in Burmese versions of dishes such as samosas and biryani and Indian curries, spices and breads such as Anaan and Parata and Chitti Kalaor or Chet Yor or the Southern Indian cuisines is also popular in cities. And then Chinese influences in Burmese cuisine are shown in the use of ingredients such as bean curd and soy sauce and various noodles as well as in stir-frying techniques. And as in neighboring countries such as Thailand and Laos, um, 
dried insects are eaten as snacks. Of all the fruits, mangoes the best. Of all the meat, the pork's the best. And of all the leaves, lapets the best. So it is a popular Burmese rhyme that sum up the traditional favorites of Burmese. Now let's devour some of the Burmese cuisine specialties. The first one is the Burmese biryani. It is different from other biryanis mainly because the chicken is cooked with rice and it also features um, cashew nuts, raisins, and paste. And it is a very fragrant dish and you can smell it long before it is ready to eat. And then the second one is the tea leaf salad. So to make the dish, the sour, slightly bitter leaves are mixed by hand with shredded cabbage, sliced tomatoes, um, crunchy dip fried beans, nuts, and peas, and a splash of garlic oil and pungent slices of chili and garlic. The tea leaf salad is a very versatile dish and it can be a snack, an appetizer, or coupled with a plate of rice or a meal. And it's also considered a stimulant because the Burmese says that eating too much leaven dough can prevent sleep. Next is the Shan style rice. It is also known in Burmese as asngadamin. And this Shan dish combines rice that has been cooked with um, turmeric and squash into a dish with a topping of flakes of fresh water oil and um, garlic oil. And it is oily and savory when served with sides of leek roots, cloves of raw garlic, and deep fried pork. And as that, I mean, becomes a snack that runs the gamut from pungent to spicy. And of course, we will not forget the Burmese curry. And as the name suggests, curry is the central element. But after you've chosen one, typically a meaty or somewhat oily curry base around pork, fish, shrimp, beef, or mutton, a seemingly never-ending succession of side dishes will follow. The last one is the Myanmar's unofficial national dish. Uh, which is mohinga. It is fine um, round rice noodles served in a hearty herbal fish and shallot based broth and it is often supplemented with the crunchy pith of the banana tree. And it's beloved as a breakfast dish but sold by mobile vendors and it's a common snack at any time of the day or night.